this is Dr. Diana. It's that time of year again and pretty soon your neighborhood is going to be crawling with kids wearing their glow sticks. I thought this would make a great opportunity to demonstrate exactly how glow sticks work. Are they a chemical change or a physical change? Let's find out. Probably all of you have used a glow stick before or at least seen one. You take it out of the package and it tells you to bend the tube until you hear it snap. Now I wonder why you actually do that. Hmm. We bend the plastic tube and we hear a snap. My goodness. Now what's actually happening there is that there is a glass vial inside of this plastic tube that contains a special liquid. It's not actually that special at all. It's hydrogen peroxide. And surrounding that glass tube is actually phenyl oxalate ester. That when that combines with hydrogen peroxide, it is a chemical reaction and the chemical reaction results in the emission of light. Chemoluminescence, wow. It's not giving off heat, but it is giving off light. What I'm gonna show you in this video up close is how we can actually demonstrate that chemical reaction by basically dissecting our glow stick. Now, this particular experiment can be dangerous if the materials get on your skin, so I do not want any of you youngsters to do this at home. And even you adults, make sure you wear your rubber gloves and your safety goggles. We have a glass vial inside of the plastic tube and that glass vial contains hydrogen peroxide. The surrounding liquids are the liquids that contain the dye and a phenyl oxalate ester. And I just cut the top of the glow stick and I'm going to carefully pour the material that comes out of the glow stick into one container. And there I can see my glass vial, which contains the hydrogen peroxide. So I'm going to carefully take out the glass vial, getting all the material. So we have now dissected our glow stick. So we have our phenyl oxalate ester, and inside the glass vial is our hydrogen peroxide. When these materials combine, it results in a chemical reaction. And the chemical reaction is chemoluminescence and it's the emission of light. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scissor and I'm just going to cut the top part of this glass vial. Cut it off, you're going to have a cleaner, clean, you're going to have a cleaner break. Now keeping in mind that I am wearing my goggles and I pour that material into my second container. Notice I'm already getting a reaction on my gloves. I'm now going to take the two fluids and combine them. And when this happens, we're gonna see an immediate glow. So I'm gonna pour the hydrogen peroxide into the phenyl oxalate ester and let's see what happens. And there we go. We have dissected the glow stick and I had my gloves on, latex, rubber gloves, whatever you happen to have. I cut the top of the glow stick with a knife. Make sure you have the glow stick upright because that material, if you have it down, obviously that material will flow out. I put the material into one separate beaker, snapped off the top of the glass vial, and those materials went into a second beaker. We combined the materials. It resulted in a chemical reaction. The type of chemical reaction that occurred was called chemoluminescence. Fireflies emit light via bioluminescence, and bioluminescence is a kind of chemoluminescence. We found on our first experiments that glow sticks are an example of a chemical reaction. The specific type of chemical reaction is called chemoluminescent, resulting in the emission of light but not heat. The second experiment I'm going to conduct will demonstrate how temperature affects the rate of reaction. Brand new glow sticks, I'll snap them in half, I'll place one in cold water and one in hot water. Now what this will demonstrate is how temperature affects the rate of reaction. So I'm going to snap one, and we have a pink glow stick, and I'm going to snap a second, and I'm going to place both of them at the same time into, one is going to be in cold water and one is in hot. The experiment demonstrates is how temperature affects the rate of reaction. In the hot water, that glow stick, the atoms are moving very fast. The glow stick will glow brighter, but for a shorter amount of time. The one on the right here, the cold water, that glow stick is going to glow, but not as bright, but it will glow longer. 
So just keep in mind that the atoms are moving very fast here due to the hot water. Temperature greatly affects the rate of reactions. Now I'm going to just turn off the light so that you can actually see a good visual of the difference between the hot water and the cold water. Here's the hot water and this one is a cold water. This one here is definitely brighter but it's going to glow for a shorter amount of time. This one's a bit dimmer but it's going to glow for a longer amount of time. 